let's screen share right away. And if we look at Galatians, Paul talks about the acts of the flesh are obvious, and he gives this long list, which includes factions and envy. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. By flesh or sarks, he does not merely mean our bodies, because factions and envy, dissensions, selfish ambition, that's not just a biological desire alone. That's us wanting to be in control. That's us wanting to be little demigods. As opposed to that, the fruit of the spirit is joy, love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Here in Lent, you can think about self-control. Against such there is no law. The law exists because of our worldliness, our sinfulness. And then he says, those who belong, who belong to Jesus Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. This doesn't mean we are not to have passions and desires. We are not to have worldly passions and desires. We are to be passionate and to desire. We are to hunger and thirst for righteousness, for one thing. So we are not to be quietists and just sit here with a funny smile on our face, enduring everything. But our salvation is not in the world. In 2 Samuel, you have the story of the conflict between Saul's people, the Benjaminites, and David's people. Now, when Saul died, it wasn't a fait accompli that David was going to be king. This still had to be played out in a worldly way. And that chapter is pretty ugly as to how it all happens. But David is important not because he was the king of Israel politically. He's important because of his righteousness, though that's compromised at one point. And because he prefigures Christ, especially in 1 Samuel, where he is being hounded and persecuted by Saul. When the son of David came along, Jesus, the apostles thought that he would free the Romans, uh, free the Jews from the Romans, that he would be a political and worldly Messiah. They were still thinking of the flesh. They were thinking in worldly ways and ways of power and politics. Now, these are things that are part of how we live. But that's not why we're Christian. I've learned this from my blogging. Our default position is to protect the church in a worldly way. And unfortunately, most of our bishops think that their response to the people who have been victimized by their own priests is to stonewall and to protect the assets of the Catholic Church, meaning the money. But that's fleshy thinking. That's part of factions and dissensions and selfish ambition. That's what makes people, that's bad witness. That's what makes people, one of the reasons people hate the Catholic Church. People aren't anti-Catholic merely because they're bigots. Sometimes we give them very strong reasons to be anti-Catholic. We have to recognize that. At any rate, we should strive to bear the fruit of the Spirit, even though one of those fruits is self-control and nobody likes self-control. But it's Lent, and we can at least pretend as if we're seeking self-control. Well, this is Paul's statement in Galatians where it's more clear than anywhere else. The difference between the flesh, meaning worldly ambition and power, and the spirit, meaning love.